Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and it is JavaScript Tuesday, the day that we look at uh, JavaScript as a language. So how can we get better with native JavaScript? And today, we come to ES11, or ECMAScript 2020, and the Nullish Coalescing Operator. It's these two goofy question marks, which are really, uh, actually really, really powerful. I think you'll get some good, good use out of this. Uh, so I have the MDN docs pulled up, and you can check uh, the description for links. Uh, this is this is similar to the chaining uh, optional chaining operator if, if you've seen that video or if you're familiar with that. But the nullish coalescing operator is a logical operator, so just like and or just like or, uh, that returns its right hand side operand only when its left hand side operand is null or undefined. Otherwise, it returns its left hand uh, side operand. Okay, real quick here, I'll hop over to another page. Nullish is a concept in JavaScript. A nullish value is a value null or undefined, and that's it. <laughs> so this is what we're talking about here, null and undefined. That's different than falsy, which is going to come up again here in the docs. A falsy value is one that's considered false when encountered in a Boolean context. They got the examples here, null and undefined. Those are the nullish ones, but also the Boolean false, also not a number, also zero. Right. Also, the empty string. You get the idea here. Falsy is different from nullish, and that's what we're talking about over here with the with the two question marks. Okay. The reason that this thing is powerful. We we scroll down to the description here. Uh, it can be seen as a special case of the OR operator. The latter, meaning the OR operator, returns the right hand side operand if the left uh, side is any falsy value. So again, zero. You you'll get the right hand side because zero is false or falsy. Uh, if, it, if it ran into not a number, or if it ran into an empty string, all of those would result uh, in or moving forward. This is nice because uh, the, the two question marks will only go forward on undefined and null. And so you can avoid a lot of that unexpected behavior, which is always a win uh, in, in programming. Let's hop over to our code editor and give this a try. I've got a VS Code open. You can use anything, of course. And I've got an HTML file with script tags. If you want to do it inside Node.js, that's just fine. It, it will work there, no problem. Uh, but let's say we're in a situation like this, where we get a, a, a customer object back from the database, or an API, something like that. And it, it has a name. We'll put in here uh, a name of Akash. And we'll have something like credits. Okay, so for my example, uh, credits are internal currency. So the, the user or the customer buys credits and then they spend them on our product and they have used them all. So we're at zero. And then we'll have something like a, a bio and that has been set then unset. So the, the client or the customer had a bio and then overwrote it and, and doesn't want anything to show up in there. Okay, we come down here and we want to print some data out to the screen. So we are going to go to customer one. We are going to check to see uh, if the customer has a name, then we're going to use it. Um, otherwise, if this isn't there, so we're using or, we'll drop in their new customer. Okay, that'll work just fine. We shouldn't have any problems there. If we go to credits and we try and grab customer.credits, and if there aren't any, then we're going to assign 10. The reason being here, uh, get rid of that comma. We want to initialize credits at 10 for new customers. Okay, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> you can see that coming, uh, I'm sure. And then for the bio, we're going to grab customer.bio. Uh, and if it doesn't exist, we're going to put in here, uh, this is a new customer, you know, please fill out bio, something like that. And I'm going to make a note here, incentivize the, the customer to fill out the bio. And then let's print these off. So we'll console.log name, credits, and bio. And as you're probably already seeing, this is not going to give us the behavior that we wanted. We refresh and we get the name and that's correct. The 10, this is bad for us because we didn't want to give them 10 free credits. They've used up all their credits, but because we had zero in there, it, it sure enough, it did reset them to 10. This is bad for them, or I guess it's going to be bad for us because they tried to unset it and we are essentially forcing them to set it. All of this happened because these are checking for falsy values and what we really want to do is check for nullish values. So I'm going to go ahead and make that note here. 
or checks for falsy values and we want, and I'll put in parentheses here, in this case, nullish. We only want to do this uh, if the user has never had any credits set or has never had a bio set or this has been set, initialized to null in the database or something like that. That is what we want. But because we use the, the, the or operator, it's, it's not going to work that way. So I'm going to copy these two lines and I'm going to comment them out and I'm going to drop in new lines right below it and we will swap this over to our knowledge coalescing operator to question marks, save it, come back over and refresh and now we get the intended behavior where this stays at zero where it should be because they have used all their credits, you don't get 10 new ones and we won't be trying to force them to, to update their, their text. Alrighty, um, if we go down a little bit here, um, something to note, you cannot commingle this with and and or unless you use parentheses because JavaScript won't know what you're talking about. Uh, I want you to, you to use foo if the left hand side is null. Well, are you talking about this whole thing or are you just talking about that thing? You can do it, you just have to use parentheses if you're going to have an expression like that. Okay, coming a little bit farther, they've got some examples that are similar to what we just did. Uh, they've got a null value, empty text, and some number. So uh, a nullish value, a falsy value, and then a non-falsy uh, value. And then uh, you can look through how these work. Uh, in this, this first case, null value is going to set the default, which is what happens. The empty one is not a nullish, so it's going to leave it alone. And then the last one is actually a value, so it won't do anything in either case. Keep going down a little bit farther. The default value to a variable, that's essentially what we have just done. Um, they just give a, another example there. Gonna keep going down past all this stuff. You can look at these examples. The short circuiting concept is important to remember. And I'll come over here and put this up at the top. Question mark, question mark, short circuits the code. If the left side is not nullish, it will not run. You won't have that code execute at all. Uh, and that is really, really powerful. Um, it works the same way with or and, and and, just something to remember, which is really nice. One of my favorite things is pairing it with the optional chaining operator. If you have, uh, have not seen this before, the question mark dot will check to see that if you happen to be trying to read a property on an object that doesn't, uh, that, that's undefined or null, you get a nasty error back. This will do the same thing. It will short circuit it up front. Uh, it's really handy because we can, uh, we can make sure that that thing exists before and then after with the, with the double question mark here. So let me give you an example. If we were going to do const contact phone, okay, and up, up above here, let's go back up to our object. We don't have uh, any contact information, but we want to go to uh, customer1.contact and then we want to grab phone, right? Something, something like that. And then maybe we'll put in here our, our nullish coalescing operator, you know, no, no phone. This is going to err because customer1.contact does not exist. We cannot read phone on an undefined variable. So back over here, refresh. Sure enough, we get, can't do it. If you put in here question mark dot, it will make sure that contact exists before it checks phone. So we come over and, and run it. So that gets rid of the error. The second thing here, we'll check to see, the, is this whole thing nullish? If it is, then use this default value. This will check to see if this is nullish before it, it breaks. And so if we console.log here, the contact phone, we get our default value, which again is really powerful. So one more time, I'll, I'll walk you through that. Uh, if we go to this object and it doesn't have a contact property, instead of erring, it will short circuit because of this and it will hop over and assign this default value. If this does exist, it will try and read the phone property and if that's nullish, it will still hop over here and grab this property. If this does exist, it will use it uh, no problem and, and, and our code will move forward, okay? One other nice use case before we wrap up here is if you happen to have two functions uh, that, that you are interested in running, the second one, only if the first one uh, accomplishes some goal, um, I'll put in here return null and I'll have function two here like so. 
And this one, it doesn't matter what it returns. I'll, I'll return a <laughs> true, doesn't really matter. If we got down here to the point where we wanted to do one open close and then use our, use our operator and then run two like this, function two will only run if function one returns null. And so we can throw in here a couple consoles quick. I ran number one and I'll copy this and put in uh, the same thing right here. I ran, but we'll change this to the number two. We hop back over to our code and, and we run it and sure enough, both functions run. If we change this over to where this returns true, or I, I should say anything other than uh, nullish, that second, uh, that second function will not run. So that's a really nice feature to give you a little bit of control flow uh, like this. Um, don't abuse it <laughs> uh, because you can get into big trouble, but uh, I'll put a note here. If one returns nullish, then two will run and I'll make a note there then and only then will a number uh, to run. So I think, again, this is kind of a nice control flow feature that is worth uh, that is worth making use of. Thanks so much for watching. I will link another JavaScript Tuesday video so you can keep going if you would like and I will see you next time.